David Crowder, I want more big government laws. I want more censorship. I, I mean, thought you were past this. You're talking about a foreign government, right? The communist Chinese government, who clearly do not have the best interests of Americans at heart. This is a government who has a vested interest in the destruction of Western civilization. We know that they're spying on American citizens. We know that they have their hands on the scales of democracy here in the United States. I mean, I've been banned from TikTok for saying that Xi Jinping has a small penis. TikTok. 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 The CEO of free speech to the CEO of censorship. Do I think that the American government spies on citizens? Sure. I also don't think that the communist Chinese government should be buying American farmland. They own a lot of your ass, Mr. Crowder. Stay Xi Jinping has a small penis. See how far you get. <laughs> My next guest is a passionate defender of free speech and a ferocious critic of censorship. Last time Stephen Crowder joined Uncensored, we locked horns on the subject of Alex Jones, airing our conflicting views on whether everyone deserves a place on a privately held digital platform. I don't think that people like Alex Jones should be allowed an unchallenged, unfettered public platform to spew lies which are done deliberately, in my estimation, done to spew lies... Unchallenged? To, well, they, they, are well, you they, out of your tree, sir? Now it's censorship of an entire platform that's up for debate. The US House of Representatives has passed a bill requiring TikTok owner ByteDance to sell the social media platform or face a total ban. Critics say it's a Trojan horse for sweeping digital censorship. One of them, Professor Jeffrey Sachs, told me the US government is far more likely to spy on him than China. Is he wrong? Well, joining me to discuss that and much more is the man himself, Louder with Crowder host, Stephen Crowder. Mr. Crowder, welcome back. Thank you for having me. I'm a little nervous because, you know, we had such a good interaction our first go around. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like the second one you want... You want spicier, so... Uh, we'll, <laughs> no, we'll, not we'll at all. Yeah. I enjoyed the last, the all last right. encounter. Um, I want real is what I want. Um, let me start. <laughs> last time, pretty much your position with me about Alex Jones was don't be a free speech hypocrite, Piers. This time, I'm going to start by throwing that allegation back at you and say, how can the king of free speech be wanting to censor Americans from an entire platform that they absolutely love? Well, first off, I... Let's not go straight to King. I know that you're using your vernacular. We get CEO, <laughs> president, I'll accept. Um, I don't really see uh, how it would be hypocritical. You know, my issue is well, we've talked about Section 230, right? And this is where uh, companies need to either be viewed as platforms, right? Be viewed as public utilities. They benefit from that. They don't have the same legal liability that publishers like the New York Times or Sun News or CNN, Fox News, whoever they are. Uh, but then they have the ability to censor people based on viewpoint. So that's my issue as it relates to Big tech. As it relates to TikTok, you're talking about a foreign government, right? The communist Chinese government, who clearly do not have the best interests of Americans at heart. And we know that they're selling information. Well, selling, they don't really need to sell it to themselves. We know that they're spying on American citizens. We know that they have their hands on the scales of democracy here in the United States. That's a separate issue, right? We're not really talking about private citizens having the right to speak freely on what are regulated effectively as public utilities. We're talking about uh, an antagonistic government with TikTok. Well, to a point, Lord Copper, there's no actual evidence, as things stand, that Chinese uh, authorities are collecting or sharing any data from Americans on TikTok, unless you've established any. Sure, there's plenty. I mean, there, there's plenty that have also been admitted when we were talking about these hearings, but I've experienced it personally as well. I mean, I've been banned from TikTok for saying that she... I don't know what we're allowed to say on your program. You are, yeah. We're uh, uncensored. From, all right, that Xi Jinping has a small penis. We did a segment called... Uh, trash TikTok, where we weren't talking about LGBTQ issues like you would see on YouTube, or for which is a bannable offense. We weren't violating any laws. We were just critical of the communist Chinese government. It was kind of a dare, and they were not dumb enough to do it. Banned us for that speech. So I don't know what kind of an American enterprise would ban someone for criticizing a communist Chinese government. But if you also look at the regulations, what people are talking about in place here is protecting American citizens. Do I think that the American government spies on citizens? Sure. Absolutely. That doesn't change the fact that a foreign government, especially when we went through, gosh, how many years of the Russia collusion hoax, what's, it's happening right in front of your eyes. That's that's my issue with with TikTok. It's quite a bit different from... And, and by the way, I don't think that it goes far enough as far as demanding transparency. I've under, uh, understood the critics to say that, uh, well, this is obviously something that would favor Facebook. And I do think in practice it, it, it could. And I do think that Facebook obviously disproportionately cons uh, uh, censors conservative voices but that doesn't mean that we should do nothing going into an election. I mean, we've had uh, Mr. Epstein uh, on this program. Sorry, not, not pedophile Alan Ep Epstein, uh, the doctor who studies social uh, media and you know online data. And that one story of the Hunter Biden laptop, that yeah. one story changes the election according to the voters themselves who voted for Biden. 
that one story that was not permitted anywhere, not on Facebook, not on Twitter, right afterwards, I said, okay, New York Post, you can get that story out there, but you have to remove your original post and upload a new one. And you know, as people who swim in this space, you know exactly what that does. You lose the interactions, you don't have the same amount of momentum, and that story might as well not exist. That one story changes the face of the United States election, Dis disregarding everything else, like the unconstitutionality of the mail-in voting and what they did in Pennsylvania, disregarding all of that, that one story, let alone uh, an even playing field for different points of view. That's the issue that we see with big tech in general. Yeah, but here's they the thing, see, benefits. on that, on that, yeah. I completely agree with you. In fact, I've not only written multiple columns saying exactly that about, because it was the New York Post, who I write columns for, who got so crudely censored, uh, they were kicked off social media for a couple of weeks at the crucial time of that election, in literally in the last few weeks of the campaign. And they reckon there could have sure. been a swing of 10%, at least, which would have been enough. Uh, I've said to Donald Trump, if you stop banging on about the stolen election without producing the hard evidence required to convince people and focused exclusively on what happened with that New York Post expose of Hunter Biden's laptop, I think you would have a lot more general support from the American people about that election being taken from you. Because there's no doubt to me, it did have a genuinely material impact and it was down to big tech censorship. But that's where, again, right. I put it to you that there's a slight double standard uh, from you, Mr. Crowder, and I say that with great respect, mm. that the double standard okay. is, here you are, you're actually currently taking the government and big tech to court over their shadow banning of social media. I've experienced that myself. In fact, I, once Elon Musk bought Twitter, in the following few months, I gained or probably regained over half a million followers, whereas in the year before right. that, I'd basically battered a draw. Right? That's not a coincidence. That is Elon no. Musk brilliantly you know, getting under the bonnet of what was going on and realising that people with any kind of contentious views particularly if they were anti-woke, as I was being pretty strident about, they were getting shadow banned, right? As were many conservative uh, commentators like yourself. Um, but here's the thing. I applaud you for the battle you're waging against government and big tech over the shadow banning. And I think we broadly agree about things like the censorship of the New York Post and that election campaign. I just find that inconsistent with you wanting to ban an entire social media platform that is American I don't, run. I don't. It's American run in America, and which I think, anyway, even if you manage to do it uh, and, and win this battle, I think the, the the Chinese would very, very quickly get all that data anyway another way. Well, that that may be so, but to be clear, I don't want to ban TikTok. That's not my position. What do you want to do? That's with never it? been my position. No, and I certainly don't want a content ban. What, the, what we're talking about is a ban on ownership of foreign influence, right? right. That's what but people that's are talking about. There should be no it. banning of TikTok. Right, but that's, that's no, banning it from America, isn't it? No, it's not banning it from America. It's putting it in the hands of American interests. Look, I think there's a big difference between some, let's say, a Canadian company, although that remains to be seen now with Trudeau. He's as bad as it possibly gets. <laughs> This guy didn't do black face. This guy did black arms and shins, and he did it like 19 <laughs> times. You know this, right? He did it like 20 times. I think, I think true, though. Listen, doing... again, to, uh, probably, know, to surprise, know, probably to your surprise. Probably to your surprise, Stephen. I completely concur about Trudeau. He is, no, a, no, I know. He is just, the nearest thing to a woke it's... fascist I've ever seen. Yes, I agree. It's, it's just, I just find it funny. That but let, let me pin you down then. What, what is your exact position about face. TikTok in America? It's communist Chinese ownership or influence. So, for example, you asked for evidence. I believe it was in 2020, 2021. Uh, you guys can look this up. Don't quote me in the year. It's one of those two years. There was leaked audio from more than I think it was, it was 70, 80 internal TikTok meetings, right? And it showed that the employees of ByteDance, they repeatedly were accessing non-public data uh, from American TikTok users. They have actually said that everything is seen in China. This is not a content ban. It's not run in the United States of America. This is a government who has a vested interest in the destruction of Western civilization. It's just saying you cannot have that company, you cannot have that communist government in charge of an application like this over giant swaths of American private data that they have admitted, we have, we have, we have heard, recorded, it is used. That's the issue, is getting it into American ownerships. Right. I do not think but if you that say, that But if you prohibit the Chinese from having ultimate ownership of TikTok, they'll simply remove it from the United States, as you know. So effectively, you are calling for a ban, because if you get the result that you want, the Chinese will pull the plug on TikTok in America. So that is a ban. No, they won't. They won't. They have plenty of ways of still running it in America and not having uh, a golden share. Well, they said they will. I mean, I also don't think... 
I also don't think that, well, they can say whatever they want. If they want to do that, that's their choice. I also don't think that the communist Chinese government should be buying American farmland at all. I don't think they should be able to buy uh, land near our ports. This is not an issue of freedom of speech. This isn't about property rights. This is one of the few legitimate purviews. And I know I'm very, I'm very conservative. I'm very laissez-faire government. I'm a federalist, but I'm not a libertarian in the sense that I don't believe the federal government has a legitimate purview. One of those few legitimate roles is to protect Americans from legitimate external and internal threats. That's why we have child pornography laws, which we discussed in the show today and did a mm -hmm. hidden camera investigation. That's why we have a military. There is a legitimate role of government. And I think a foreign government that is diametrically opposed to our national interests and the interests of privacy and basic fundamental rights of Americans, that is one that would fall under the purview of, okay, look, this can run in the United States, but you'll have to pull a Budweiser Modelo where you have different licensing and different ownership here so we have the data uh, in the hands of people who we know won't sell it, use it, with the does communist it, Chinese Does it not make you pause for thought, though, Stephen, that people like Vivek Ramaswamy, who I know you, you really like, Donald Trump, and others are on the conservative right are vehemently in disagreement with you about this? They are now. And Biden says he'll sign it. I mean, does, that's going to give you pause for thought, isn't it? It absolutely does give me pause for thought. You're right. You'd like to think, hold on a second... You know, it's kind of like, uh, I think, the old Alice Cooper quote when it was John Kerry versus George Bush. He said, if I wasn't a George Bush supporter, I would read the list of Kerry supporters and immediately switch because that included Osama bin Laden at the point in time. However, I have to let logic prevail and say, hold on a second. Why was Vivek? Donald Trump had a almost identical law that he was about to put through. Why are they now against it? We can disagree on that. However, mm -hmm. looking at the limited purview of this kind of a bill, I believe that certainly uh, getting the Communist Chinese Party out of dealing with Americans' private data is important. Also, the fact that, look, they have tilted the skills. We've seen it with Facebook. We see it with Google, YouTube, and uh, before um, Elon purchased, sorry, it always screws me up, X. Such a silly name. I want to say Twitter. I get it. It's X. <laughs> You've been X. It sounds like a reality show. I think that's a legitimate role of the government. I don't think that the government should, for example, Jen Psaki calling for Spotify to ban Joe Rogan mm -hmm. because he's critical of the mRNA injections, that would be uh, an illegitimate overreach of government. We know that they do that. We know that they've done that with COVID, Google, YouTube. So I'm not defending the American government as though they are inherently altruistic, but we certainly know that the communist Chinese government doesn't have our interests at heart. And that being said, I also understand 8D chess, let China buy up land, buy up land near our ports. And then if it does come down to some sort of global conflict, just say, yeah, we're taking it. Well, it's, well, it's actually, I mean, look, the question I would have for you, I said, look, I, your concern for China uh, getting its fingerprints into American, uh, you know, real estate Any or fingerprints. property or land or whatever is fine. What about the fact they own so much of American debt? I mean, if China wanted to turn the tap off tomorrow of America's economy, it actually could. I mean, that would concern me a lot more, frankly, than kids watching dancing videos on TikTok. I'm surprised that oh, this is a hill. Me. I'm surprised <laughs> it's, a hill, it's the hill you want to die on when it comes it's to Chinese to... interference in America. They own a lot of your ass, Mr. Crowder. First off, I do not want to die on this hill. You said I want to die on this hill. Second, I agree with their tiny fingerprints all over our crap. I completely agree. And I also have a problem with the fact that we spend more on the interest on our debt than we do on the military. People do not realize that the spending is out of control. However, when it comes to setting a budget, all of a sudden, we get a little bit murky on the rule book. So I've been remarkably consistent. Yep, we need to reduce our deficit. We need to do something about the debt. We also need to protect our elections from foreign interference. We need to protect our American, our constitutional republic from bad actors. That would be pretty consistent across the board. Needs to be done in a way that is consistent with our First Amendment rights here in the United States. And uh, obviously, the only thing consistent with big tech is that they've been remarkably inconsistent. They're not acting, actually. They're not following the laws. Let me give you an example here. Like, this is an issue that we run into. Uh, you're very familiar with this, having worked in journalism, single party consent laws. This is how investigative journalism operates. Without this, there can be no Watergate, for example. This means that you can record a conversation if you are the only party uh, who decides to record the conversation, as long as you are taking place in this conversation, meaning it's you, someone else, you can record it. That's the law. I think there are 11, uh, 11 states that are dual party consent. YouTube doesn't honor that law. In other words, if you record someone well within your legal bounds in a single party consent state, YouTube has come to us and they do it with investigative journalists. They say, hold on a second, the person who was being recorded didn't want to be recorded, be so we're removing it. So how can investigative journalism exist at all? How can you at all speak truth to power? How can you catch those in power 
uh, if they're corrupt, if you have big tech running interference for them. So I've been remarkably consistent and just, and if people disagree, that's fine. I don't want anyone banned, to be clear. And if they want to be private platforms, they want to be publishers, they can do that too. The only issue that I have is they need to decide, do they benefit from the protections of 230, where they are treated as utilities, meaning Verizon, or God forbid you're using Vonage for long distance calls, like one of my grandparents. If they're using one of these services, even if they're, even if they're, openly talking about how they support Adolf Hitler. Again, Hitler bad to anyone tuning in. You can't remove them from this telephone service because they're treated like a utility. These luxuries, these uh, th these protections from legal liabilities, these are afforded to big tech platforms, but they will remove people simply because of a point of view. My point, and the only issue that I've been championing here is, if you want to be a private platform like the New York Times, like CNN, go ahead. If you want to be treated as a public platform, as a utility that Section 230 allows, then you can't censor based on political point of view because that's when we end up with the Hunter Biden laptop story. That's when we end up with the Ashley Biden diary. Okay, but would that's you be comfortable? My final point on this. My final point on this. Okay. On TikTok, would you be comfortable, yes. you Stephen Crowder, with all the reputation you've built up for certain points of view? Would you be comfortable if ultimately the government, the United States government? takes action in the way that you would like it to. And as a consequence, China pulls a plug on TikTok and tens, maybe hundreds of millions of Americans who thoroughly enjoy TikTok look at Stephen Crowder and go, wow, that guy called for more big government laws to censor my free speech right to enjoy TikTok, which is run in America by an American company separate from the parent company in, in China. Would you be comfortable with that scenario playing out? Uh, well, first off, that is such a loaded scenario that it would be tough to say which part with well, which I agree. It's the inevitable consequence of what you're, of what you're planning. The Communist Chinese Party cannot have a golden share interest in TikTok because you have misused it. We already know you've misused it, so you've got to start playing by the rules. And they say that we're, we're going to take our tiny little ball back to our house and go home. Uh, yeah, I would be fine with that. Stephen I just think Crowder, we need to play by the rules. Stephen Crowder, I want more big government laws. I want more censorship. Uh, are you, I, I mean, thought you were past this. Aren't you starting your own platform? Come on, don't. Are you not uneasy about the way this is yours. going? <laughs> what was that? You not uneasy about this potential headline? I'm not. I stand by completely. But that's not what I said. Pierce. From the you king of free speech what or whatever you want to call yourself, the CEO of free speech to the CEO of censorship. You are Mr. You are into the royalty, aren't you? Get over it. <laughs> I think you'd make a good. You'd make a good prince, actually. You would make a good king. Uh, kings are reserved well, for why? people I have like to me. Sleep with my relative? No, it's actually your name. It's not very kingly. Uh, it'd have to be someone like Piers. Piers is old it's English. It's not repeated. very kingly, and my and, and my blood is still red. I don't have the blue. I don't think I do. A There's very a reason good we've never had royalty. a king, Steve. It's just not. It's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. We could agree on that. Can we agree about this? We talked about Alex Jones last time. In the last few weeks alone, since he was restored to X, and my criticism of Elon Musk led to him cancelling an interview with me before it even happened um, because he objected to mild criticism of him doing a U-turn on that decision to bring back Alex Jones. But I think I've been vindicated by some of the insanity that Jones has been uh, posting on X in the last few weeks. He posted a video of the terror attack in Moscow with the words, NATO strikes. Another headline based on, on one of his posts. Globalist Macron plans Ukrainian false flag to launch World War III. Another video entitled, World Population Declines for the First Time in Centuries as Globalist Culling Operation Continues to Accelerate. I mean, all of this, as you know, and as I know, and as Alex Jones knows, and this is the pertinent point, is complete and utter invented baloney and not based on anything even close to resembling fact. Is it right? I mean, you want to protect American interests. Is it right that you have somebody like Jones with the massive platform that he has, which you know he abused so badly with Sandy Hook families, that he was, he was ordered to pay a no, billion dollars? Right? I don't know that. What, that he abused... I don't. I, I will go with you on everything except I don't know that Alex Jones knows, and I don't know that he horrendously abused his platform. I just want to make sure that I'm clear as to okay, what. Okay. Well, I let, me, let me explain what I mean I, by I that. I don't agree with what he said. Okay. I, I, let me clarify. I would say that by the way he went about targeting the families of the Sandy Hook victims, in my view, was one of the most despicable, deliberate defamations I've ever seen. Hence the billion dollar plus payout, which he so far failed to, pay, I think, even pay a dollar. But the consequences of what he did there to generate vast personal wealth by pouring misery 
of fuel onto the misery of those families, I think was unconscionable and should have been why Elon Musk, when he originally was asked about it and said he wouldn't let people who stood on the graves of dead children be on the platform. I thought he was right the first time. Anyway, we won't get into that particular debate again, but... Given well, you the just other... did it. You well, just no, did it for a minute no, no, and a half. I'm, I'm, talking about why, I'm talking about why I had the falling okay. out with Elon about it. But in terms of the recent headlines based on his posts, have you revised your opinion at all about whether it is right that people like Alex Jones are allowed to do this to big audiences on things like X, given they're spouting what I think is complete deliberate nonsense designed to make money? Ah, ah. See, there's the word right there. Deliberate. And you and I both know that you're familiar with defamation laws, libel, and slander. And someone can say whatever they want if they believe it to be true. Now, I don't know. That's the one thing that I said. I don't know that Alex Jones would know this to be untrue. I disagree with what you've just... Of course, I can't see what it is that you brought up. I've never maintained the position that I agree with Alex Jones on everything. Mm -hmm. I don't. But here's the beauty. First off, deliberate is key. If he's deliberately lying, that's different. And there's a law against that, right? If he's deliberately defaming an individual. You think but he genuinely is, thinks that NATO but, launched that terror attack on Moscow? I know Alex Jones, and I I believe it's very likely. Well, you I think he, he genuinely I believe he's sitting believes at his computer it? Saying, oh, this is clearly has the marks of NATO all over. This is what's mm. happening, and they're putting chemicals in the water. They're turning amphibians into asexual anamorphic beings. I've seen the papers. I believe that he probably believes it, and I don't necessarily agree with everything he says. I'm not if in the did, business of doing he that. Did, but here's he one thing I am in the business of doing. Let me finish. Let me if finish, he didn't believe it, what would you it's think? It's very important that you and I are able to discuss it. What happened before is what I believe to be completely unacceptable. Where Alex Jones, because of 10 people on one conference call, said his point of view will not be permitted, and so we can misrepresent it for him. You disagree with what he said based on what you're telling me. I disagree with his position. Mm. But the fact that we are able to combat it with better ideas or better information is far better for society. And by the way, the, the, the alternative is far more dangerous. We've seen it at work. If these people, and by these people, I mean the progressive left, would have their way, not only Alex Jones, mm. yours truly, you eventually, mm. Joe Rogan would be gone. When you have members of the administration Deliberately calling for censorship of individual programs, but what not about even this, platforms. Sam? Okay, that is far more terrifying what than about someone this? saying something. The same Alex United. Jones, the same Alex Jones in 2012, uh, launched a petition on a White House petition website page to have me deported from the United States because I was criticizing the Second Amendment. Now, where do you sit with that, Mr. Crowder? Because it wasn't that an appalling attempt to, to censor my right to free speech, which, by the way, Barack Obama, who was president, eventually did announce, because he had to, because it reached a certain threshold on that website, on the White House website, that I was allowed to stay in the country because I was entitled to my First Amendment rights to comment, even adversely, on the Second Amendment. What did you think of Alex Jones's attempt to censor me by actually removing me from the United States? I think it's funny. And I don't think it was meant to be taken very seriously. Yes, if they were it was. actually going to immigration and ICE and have you removed, then of course I would disagree with that. But I'm not going to lie. I think that is hilarious <laughs> as all get out. You being deported for what you said. I was Come saved on, by Obama. Have, That's why I'll always have, have humor about it. I will always have a soft spot for Barack Obama because he literally saved me for the American people. And my God, you've shown a lack of gratitude ever since. Well, he's not acted on behalf of the American people uh, when he was president or his post-presidency, so it wouldn't surprise me. But I don't think that you should be removed just because you're wrong about the Second Amendment, Pierce. And I, I know that you re you've reviewed your points of view on that, and, uh, and I think that you've clarified your positions. Yeah. They're far more reasonable these days from yeah. what I understand. And I think that's, hey, that's the beauty of having a dialogue. I agree. I think that we are able to discuss these different ideas as a good. that is very, very different from a foreign actor, a communist government, who, by the way, it also wouldn't make sense at all if uh, if they didn't have any ownership, why it would be removed, right? This is kind of one of those circular logic issues. Well, if China said they're going to remove it, if they can't be under the uh, interest of bite dance, right? If the Chinese communist government can't have a golden share in it, then they'll remove it. Well, hold on a second. I thought they said that they were saying they have no ownership in it. There's a huge difference, by the way. There's a huge difference, for example, between American citizens having the right to own and bear arms mm -hmm. and non-citizens. And that's something really, if I can just touch on this for a second, we do have a constitution here in the United States. And how it is fundamentally different is the First Amendment, Second, you go through all of them, right? We don't believe that our government, certainly not the Founding Fathers, grant rights. They don't create rights. They simply recognize God-given inalienable rights, and they serve to protect them. Now, because other countries don't share that point of view, it is the duty of our government to recognize 
the God-given birth rights, fundamental human rights founded mm -hmm. in natural rights to its citizens because citizens of the world who are not citizens of the United States, they do not have the same skin in the game. They don't have a vested interest. They want the opposite of what the American view of foundational rights are. There's a huge difference and I have no problem delineating between American citizens benefiting from the constitutional protection uh, endowed by our creator and members of a communist Chinese government. It's a conversation we can have, but that delineation okay. is one that I don't shy away from. And Stephen Crowder, what I will tell you is I intend to go away from this interview and immediately post the highlights to TikTok where we'll get millions of views, so thank you very much. Stay Xi Jinping has a small penis, see how far you get. <laughs> <laughs> Always good to have you on Uncensored. And that's why we're Uncensored, because you can say things like that. Stephen Crowder, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, brother. Be well.